Now we're going to learn how to get this whole area centered on the page. This will be a task that's required of you often, so it's good to review it a few times after this, okay? Uh, looking at the final result here, you'll see that from side to side, everything has been centered. The only thing that I'm not going to try to affect is the UL with the color. I am going to affect the nav, but not the UL and not this image, which I've already given a cover property to. Let's look at it in the inspector. Um, here it is in the inspector, and I can see here that, let's see, there's the nav. I don't want to center that, but I do want to center the UL. And then it looks like I've got this div, let me scroll up. I do want to center everything that is in this div ID titled content. So those are the things I want to center. The UL, oops, it's hard to see it all at the same time, right? The UL and the content area, those two pieces the UL and the content. Let's take a look at the styles. I've already built in a style here for you. And this is it right here. Let me take this whole thing, cut it out. You may want to move these notes along with the rest of this on your own. And I'm going to put it up here at the top. And now I'll take the comment tags off and you'll be able to see how it works. You can see here I've used a compound selector, so there are commas between it. And I've set the width at 800, which is very standard. And then what I've said here is this is the margin shortcut rule. And if there are two numbers only after a margin shortcut rule, the first one applies to the vertical axis, the top and the bottom. The second one applies to the horizontal axis. So this essentially says put zero amount of margin on the top and bottom. And on the left and right, make it auto, which has the effect of centering it. I'm going to save and refresh this. So now, let me just open this up. You'll be able to see that I've got an 800 width centering happening. My next trick is going to be to cut this into two columns and add the images. Now let's make this content into two columns using the float property. We also need to rein in this learn more button that was affected by the uh, CSS rule that was margin zero auto. Uh, I think we need to get the four images down below most popular films so that it will look a little bit like this. We'll get them in there first. And let's check out the index.html. You can see here that the div ID called content is already divided into two parts. There's a section with an ID. There's the section. And there's an aside. And then the content div closes. So the parent tag is the div ID equals content. Its children are section and aside. Both section and aside have children as well. And we're about to put a few more children underneath this H2. We use the image tag. And let's see, I need to check the order here. First we have Footloose, then Mystic, I think that says, then Apollo, and then X-Men. So I'll try to remember that order. AMG SRC equals. And I'm going to get into my Assets folder, into my Images folder, and Footloose is the first one. My right arrow takes me out of the quote marks, and I can type the alt. And this is going to be Footloose Movie Poster. And then I'll end the tag. Now, 
Lazy Rachel. You can be lazy too. I'm going to copy that and paste it for three more times. And then all I have to do is change this. So it's easy to know what the name of my image is because I'm looking over here. So this one is going to be, was it Mystic? Yes. Mystic.gif and I'll change this alt tag to say Mystic. And then this one is going to be Apollo.gif and this will be Apollo movie poster and this final one will be X-Men. I don't know if that's a capital M or not. It feels looks better being small. Anyway, let's save and take a peek at it. So there's my four posters. Now, why are they side by side and not stacked on top of each other? Because the IMG tag is an inline HTML element. I don't know if you've already taken, yes, by now you have already taken the inline and block level quiz, but it, this is a really important thing to understand the difference between inline and block level, as you can see. All right. Let's get these two columns set up. We'll consult the result here and make some decisions. Um, it looks like this half is a little bit bigger than this half. So for now, I'm just going to call it 6040. And I'll get out my calculator. And let's do a little math here. We know that it is 800 pixels wide. And so if I multiply that times 0.6, I'm going to get 480. So I know that the 60% side is going to be, this side is going to be 480. And if I multiply the same 800 by 0.4, I get 320. So I'm going to remember 480 and 320. And I'm going to come over to my style sheet. Let me just double check. On the index, my section, which is what I want to be 60, has an ID of main. So let's use that in the CSS. And let's add the aside while we're here, while I have it fresh in my head, the numbers. And let's put the floats on while we're here. save and see what that looks like. All right, well, we're familiar with what's happening, right? You can see that the main content area now believes it has no children. These two items which were in the main content area have been floated. So the footer is jumping right up. Let's do an inspector and take a peek. So if I hover over this div ID equals content, you can see right up there in the measurements, right above the footer, the div uh, ID equals content thinks that it is zero pixels tall. So let's take care of that. Let's apply the clear fix. I know that my clear fix is a class and it can be applied on the HTML right to the content that already has an ID, we can just add class equals clear fix. Let's save it and see if that helped. Let me close this. 
Looks pretty good. There's the footer right there. We still have a little work to do here. We need to wrangle some margins here and get that scooted in, but we are very close. All right, let's do some fine tuning here. I think we need some more space between these movie posters and some space between these two floats. Uh, if I look at my final result here, yeah. This looks like about 10 pixels, so maybe five all around of each, and um, maybe 20 pixels in between these two. We're dealing with a fixed layout here of 800 pixels from this edge to this edge. And on my main selector, I'm going to add padding right. Uh, 20 px. So let's save and take a peek at that. Yeah, there we go. That looks very nice. Now, in order to deal with the images, I think that if we float them first, even though I know they're because of the 800 pixel restriction that we've got, they are just there's not room for four of them, so they're going two and two. And that is what I want, but I think if I float them, I will have a little bit more control. So let's come over to the uh, styles again. And the images are inside the aside, so I'll put them below that. This will be an IMG tag. And first I'll float them left. And then I'll give them a margin. And I said 10 pixels in between them. So I'll put five all around, and that should equal 10. So let's take a peek at that. That looks pretty good. I think it looks good. I, I can see now that I might want some space. Certainly I want some down there, and maybe a little more here. Let's look at the final result one more time. Yeah, a little more up here and some down there. So I'm thinking that uh, that will be on the content area, right? Because it's going to include this section and this aside. Let's look and make sure. The content area includes the section and the aside. So I'll create a rule for that too. Um, I like my big, big rules to be up top. The bigger the item the more the higher up I put it. So I'll create a pound. Is the ID equals content? Is that what it is? Um, no, it's ID equals me. Oh, div ID equals content. Yes, so that's I was on the right path. Pound content and I'm going to use the shortcut, and because I'm going to use the shortcut, that means the first numeral here will be the vertical axis, the up and down, and that's what I want to affect. I'll say 2EM, and then the horizontal axis I don't want to affect at all, so I'll say 0. Let me do a save and a refresh. And I think that looks pretty good. That's a good start. Oh, oh, look at this up here. All right, we have two things going on. They're two very related problems. Uh, and what they are is that rules are overriding other rules. So the first problem is that I made the tag a block level element so that these links here, I made these links, the A tag, a block level element so that they would stack up side by side. But that made this button also a block level element, and I don't want it to stretch out like that. So this rule that I made up here for these is overriding this rule down here. The other problem is that the image rule that I made for these over here, I created a standard image rule that said float left. So now this image up here is floating left. So I need to create some specificity. 
I need to uh, separate this image rule from this image rule. And I need to separate this A rule from this A rule. So this problem is all about contextual selectors. And I know that you know you could add classes or IDs to these uh, A tags and the IMG tags. But there is a way that is so much easier for us. So let's take a look at our styles. So I'm going to add a little comment here before the image tag. Special styling for the images that are in the aside tag. So the way I deal with this is aside space. Oh my goodness. Um, and now I'm going to add to this note the space before IMG. So what I'm talking about here is this space here means that any image tag which is inside the aside parent, which is a child of the aside tag. And let's just confirm here that these images are a child, you can see the indent, of the aside parent. So back here on styles, we've created a contextual selector. We've said aside is the parent, space, image is the child. So I could add two or three spaces here. It doesn't matter. Usually in HTML and CSS, a space doesn't do anything. But in this case, it does a lot. So you always want to be sure that you have at least one space in, in between contextual selectors. I'm going to save this and refresh this. And now my images are fixed. So let's use what we've learned to fix the A selector. Here in Styles, we have an A selector that says Display Block, which is helping these to be side by side. But it's ruining this. So what we want to do is take care of only the A selectors that are in the nav bar. So let's look at these. Here is the A that is display and block. I'm going to say nav in front of it. Let's just double check the index and make sure that that is indeed what I want to do. Here are some A tags that have a parent of the nav. It's actually got an ID of main nav, so I could even be more specific and say main nav. Is that the way it's written? It's white, so it looks like a mistake. So let me just look at how main nav is written. ID. Oh, it needs a pound sign. There we go. Save, and now let me refresh that. So now only the A up here are side by side, and down here it's rained back in. 